hi guys welcome back to another healthcare assistant interview questions episode um this is the third um, episode we've done in this series so far we've covered the infection control interview questions and the care of the older person interview questions as well as other varied um, interview questions if you don't know, these are interview questions that you would face in a healthcare assistant interview. So if you're looking for a healthcare assistant interview in the UK or in Ireland, then you'll find um, these questions available. Um, without further ado, let's get right into this video with question number one. How do you ensure you comply with health and safety regulations as a healthcare assistant um, in the workplace? Now, what the interviewer is trying to understand here is that, do you know that if you're working in a, in, a, in a nursing home or in a hospital, that there are certain health and safety regulations that you need to adhere to? They need to understand that you do know how you go about finding out these regulations. Yes, of course, there is standard regulations that you learn when you're studying the healthcare assistant course, but each workplace has certain measures that they have in place, certain health and safety regulations that are, they, have in, they have in place. Um, this would be covering things such as understanding where um, understanding fire safety rules, understanding where fire exits are, um, understanding where the point where you all meet if the fire alarm goes off. Um, so they may ask you more questions in detail related to fire safety, but we'll cover that in a separate um, video where we'll cover the fire safety um, interview questions as well um, but they'll be looking at mostly that that you know the policies in place um, in the workplace that you need to follow now I'm going to give you a more technical answer to this a more textbook answer to this I ensure that I comply with health and safety regulations by staying informed of the latest policies and guidelines attending regular safety training sessions and adhering to safety protocols and procedures in my daily work. I also make sure to use protective equipment such as gloves and masks when appropriate and report any safety concerns or incidents to my supervisor. If you want to go more in detail about this, you would be covering things like saying if you saw that a hoist is damaged, you would then put it away and immediately tell your colleagues not to use it and immediately not notify management as well, um, maintenance as well, that this hoist is out of order. Um, if you see a fire safety door that is not working, if you see um, a fire exit is blocked um, adhering to safety would be to remove that um, that block that is in place to make sure that fire all fire exits are not blocked in any way shape or form so you can definitely go into detail and you know talk about this more um, you don't have to do the textbook um, um, answer as well but you can definitely um, change this answer with your own words what would you do if you notice a safety hazard in the workplace? When answering this question, it is important that you make sure that there is no immediate danger. Sometimes the interviewer will lean into this question a little bit more and say, what if a patient is in immediate danger? The correct answer to this question is that you immediately report it to management. But what if there is a patient in immediate danger? Now what you need to do is, first of all, make sure that you remove that patient from danger immediately, if you can. Now, for example, if let's say you went to a door and you were about to open the door and then you noticed smoke, you started to smell smoke and then you felt with the palm of your hand and you felt that the door is hot. For example, in this situation, if you're ready, the door is feeling hot, that means that the fire is beyond your expertise. You would not be able to contain it. So the first thing that you would do is ring the alarm and then go meet at the fire point. But what the interviewer is looking for here is that do you know the certain procedures 
if there was a safety incident or if there was a safety issue in the workplace. Notifying management is the first thing and they're also trying to take a look at your assessing skills that can you access that danger that there is no immediate danger at the moment, there is nothing that you can do to rectify the situation at the moment. So sometimes it can be issues like I said before a fire exit door is blocked you can easily fix that by removing the blockage for example maybe there is a chair there is a wheelchair blocking the exit the best way to fix that is remove the the, the problem and maybe you can say at the next handover meeting that guys look i've noticed that a lot of times our fire exit doors are being blocked and you can mention this to your colleagues during handover so that people can be on the lookout for you now let's get into the textbook response for this if i noticed a safety hazard in the workplace i would immediately report it to my supervisor or the appropriate safety officer if necessary I would take action to fix the hazard, such as cleaning up a spill or removing a tripping hazard while following established safety procedures. Have you ever encountered a safety issue with a patient or visitor? So now the interviewer is asking you to look back in your previous work experience and if you've ever encountered a safety issue with a patient or visitor and how you handled it. I know for some people they may say I've never encountered that but if you look back in the workplace at some point of time there has been some sort of safety issue that you've encountered if you cannot think of something immediately you can give an example um, of, of, of situations that may arise and how you would deal with them what the interview is really looking for here is to access how you would respond if you were in this situation they want to access that would you remain calm would you follow all the safety procedures do you know what to do if you are faced with the situation you would answer this for example by saying yes I have encountered safety issues with patients or visitors on occasion. For example, I've had to intervene when a visitor was be behaving aggressively or when a patient was trying to leave their room without assistance. In these situations, I remain calm, assess the situation, and use my training and experience to resolve the issue safely and quickly. I also make sure to document the incident and report it to my supervisor as protocol. Now, it is important to note that with all safety issues, it is important that you document any, um, any issues, you follow the protocol that is in place in the nursing home or in the hospital. It is important that you notify your supervisor or your team leader and you make sure that this is documented as well. This is something that is important so that we learn from our mistakes to avoid making the same mistakes again. How do you ensure you maintain a clean and hygienic environment in the workplace? This is an interviewer favorite. What they're trying to see here is that you understand that you need to keep the environment that you work in clean. They're also trying to understand as well that you understand what you can clean. For example, you cannot empty um, objects with shops yourself. There is a dedicated team, usually it's people outside of the nursing home that are trained in doing this and removing these safely. So they understand that you know what to do and you also know what not to do. Maintain a clean and a hygienic environment by following established cleaning and disinfection procedures, such as washing my hands regularly, cleaning and sanitizing surfaces and equipment after each use, and disposing of waste properly. I also make sure to use appropriate personal protective equipment such as gloves and gowns when necessary to prevent cross-contamination. Can you provide an example of how you ensure that patients are safe when you're assisting them with mobility or transfers? Now, when answering this question, it's important not to put every patient in the same box and just assume that every patient uses a hoist, um, every, patient's, uh, every patient uses a wheelchair. So it is important that you answer this question as broadly as you can. You can answer, it, you can answer first of all by saying that, number one, before you assist a patient with mobility or with the trans bay, you understand that patient's mobility needs. Now, in every nursing home, there is a place 
where you'll find all the information about a certain patient. It can be on Epicare, which is like a system that you use, or sometimes in every residence room. I think this is currently the law by Hikwa, but in every um, residence room, there should be a paper. It's usually inside the wardrobe or at the back of the door when you open the door that explains this patient's um, mobility, um, their mobility needs. So what this paper would usually say is that, okay, we've got patient A here. Patient A is assistance of two. That means that you cannot transfer them or you cannot assist with their mobility on your own. You need somebody else to help you. Some may say that this patient is an assistance of one meaning that one single person can um, assist you and it will also say that can this person um, walk on their own or do they need a wheelchair or devices to assist them with walking. In terms of transfers as well, it will also explain if the patient needs a hoist. Whenever somebody needs a hoist, that means that they need two people to assist them. So. Sometimes it may not clarify, it may just say hoist, but whenever you see hoist, just remember that you need another person to assist you because with the hoist, as much as it is helpful, as much as it makes our lives easier, it can be a very dangerous equipment if not used appropriately. That is why it is important that two people assist um, when you're transferring somebody with a hoist. To be honest, for the entire time I worked as a healthcare assistant, I hated the hoist. I always got so nervous. I always thought, what if a band snaps? What if something breaks? But they're usually steady pieces of equipment that have helped nurses and healthcare assistants, especially with their backs. Um, and if used appropriate, and if used properly um, and maintained properly are a great use. Now let's look at the textbook version of how you can answer this question. When assisting patients with mobility or transfers, I ensure their safety by following established lifting and positioning techniques, using appropriate equipment such as a hoist, transfer points, and communicating clearly with the patient to ensure their cooperation and comfort. I also make sure to assess the patient's physical and cognitive abilities before initiating any transfer to ensure safety and prevent injury. I'm just going to interject quickly here guys if you are enjoying this video then i would really appreciate it if you subscribed and left me a comment in the comment section just so that i know that you guys are enjoying this video and if you would like me to make more of these have you ever received training in the handling of shops and hazardous um, materials if you haven't received any training on this, please do not lie as interviews will as interviewers will catch you on that as this is a very technical um, question. I have done a separate video on infection prevention and control and I have answered um, a section there and a question there on how to handle shops um, in the healthcare setting environment. Yes, I have received training in the safe handling of hazardous materials and shops. For example, I have learned how to properly dispose of shops, such as needles, in designated containers to prevent accidental needle sticks. I have also learned how to handle and dispose of biohazard materials, such as bodily fluids, in a safe and hygienic manner. Can you describe on how you would handle a patient who is at a risk of falling and injuring themselves? Oh, you can answer this question by saying that I would assist this patient that making sure that whenever they are um, mobile, they're using the appropriate devices um, to assist with their mobility. Um, you would also cover this question for nighttime that if they're going to bed, you make sure that they have the appropriate um, devices to assist them and avoid injury if they would fall or put measures in place to assist to avoid an injury. This um, includes things like um, mats, there are certain mats that you put on either side of the bed for someone who is at a risk of fall. That way even if they roll over the bed, they fall on their mat and they are not injured. The um, beds that are in nursing homes and hospitals are adjustable so you would also touch on adjusting the height of the bed to come down to a height that even if the patient rolls off the bed, they are still safe as well.
these certain rails on the side of the beds that you can put up as well to prevent um, injury however it is important to note that this is a bit of a catch interviewers like to ask this question because they want to also test your the knowledge that you have when it comes to procedures you cannot put bed rails on every bed when a person is at a risk of fall it isn't just a give for everybody before bed rails are put patients needs have to be assessed by someone else not yourself and then it will be agreed with the family as well that we've come to a point where we need bed rails for this person to avoid injury so putting bed rails for everybody or for anyone who is at a risk of fall who are not specifically um when it's not specifically agreed that they should have bed rails can actually be regarded as a restraint so if you just say i'll put bed rails um if the person is at risk of fall what you're saying now is that i will restrain the person and which is very wrong so you need to make sure that if you're going to mention bed rails you mention to the interviewer as well that you know that i will put on bed rails if if it is already agreed and management has informed you that this person is now on bed rails if you're not sure if a person is supposed to have bed rails you can ask um, the nurse in charge or if you look on epic or their documentation it will advise that you this person is supposed to use bed rails there's always a form of documentation even if a nurse tells you something they can still make a mistake always check documentation always check the epic system if you're using epic that is this actually written down does this particular person is supposed to have bed rails at night let's get into the textbook version of this answer if i were managing a patient who is at a risk of falling or injuring themselves in their room i would have first I would first access the patient's needs and abilities to determine the proper interventions. This may include adjusting the patient's bed height, providing a bedside um, assistive device, or using bread rails or other safety equipment. I would also make sure to frequently check on the patient, especially during periods of high risk, and communicate clearly with them about their mobility and safety needs. What strategies um, do you know that you can put in place when um, working with patients who have mobility issues or who have um, behavioral challenges? Now, as much as health, being a healthcare assistant is about assisting others, you cannot assist another person if you are injured. It is important that you protect your back so whenever you are working, you apply the proper manual handling um, skills that is um, not to lift with your back. Um, if a patient is an assistance of two, you get a colleague to assist, to assist you. You also have to understand your limitations as well. Don't push yourself to limits that are beyond what you can do. So you would need to cover this with the interviewer that using the proper manual handling techniques, um, making use of the proper um, devices that are there to assist with transfers such as hoist. Now, the textbook answer to this is very simple. To manage my own safety and preventing injury when working with patients who have physical or behavioral challenges, I would use strategies such as proper lifting and transfer techniques. Well guys, my name is Satini and this is the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, why not let me know in the comment section and I will continue doing these. We still have, I think about four more that I want to do in this series um, before we wrap up these healthcare assistant interview questions. Um, I've done other ones as well. You can check those out if you're interested and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.